Hello, folks. Welcome to Hangouts with Rexer. If by any chance this is your first time joining the session, happy to have new community members around here. This is a community space where we, we share with passionate IoT developers uh, working alongside RAP products, and we share about their cool projects, hacks, and many other experiences. My name is Maria Hernandez, Developer Relation Lead. I will be moderating this session next to my colleague, Jose Marcelino, our solution architect. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and before starting the today's session, I want to highlight that your participation as well as your opinion are super important to us to make this space a better space for everyone. So based on this, we'll be giving away with love to share to all of those who leave their comments about the session via Twitter during the next 24 hours. So just make sure to mention our wireless Twitter account and also to use the Raster hashtag for a valid participation. In addition to this, we'll be giving away to Rax Max Max at the end of the session among the people connected during the session. So stay until the end for a chance to win uh, to win one rap match for your work match. So without further to add, it's time to introduce our guest. In today's session, we'll be, we will be chatting with a telecommunication engineer passionate about technology, open source, arts, and for hay cultures. He's always learning and testing new technologies with the aim of mixing classical automation with Internet of Things. His name is Xavier Florenza. Welcome, Xavier. Hi, good afternoon. Hello, nice to be Xavier. here. Good afternoon. good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on wherever <laughs> you are, because we have a, a very worldwide community, so this is pretty, pretty nice. And so, welcome, where? Happy. Xavier, where are you based? In Barcelona. Now okay. it's Barcelona. Uh, 7 p.m. It's 7 p.m. Yes. <laughs> I, think, I think it's similar to you, Jose, no? Yeah, just one hour difference. Just one hour different. Yeah, for me it's just lunchtime, one p.m. over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So let's start with the, with the session. So why don't we start by telling us a little bit about, a little bit more about yourself, about your background, as well as your education, and when and how did you start thinking with IoT technologies? Yeah. So I started thinking. As a child, always mm -hmm. opening, breaking the devices. My parents were worried because <laughs> they were breaking everything. And they were, uh, <laughs> or how, how does these electric devices work? And uh, then um, I, even at the school, with uh, 14 years old, I started uh, with uh, studying electronics same time with the school, because I uh, was so interested in such thing. Uh, at the school, uh, I like biology and not mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then later on, I uh, uh, started with uh, computer, but that's, this come later. First with mm -hmm. electronics and when all my friends were mastering computers, then I decided to jump into computers. Okay. But this was an Amstrad CPC an Amstrad. 464. No, oh, okay. 64 kilobytes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with a cassette to store mm -hmm. the programs. And okay. programming a basic and an assembler. And, but making my own interface card for switching inputs and outputs. Oh, wow. uh, doing, uh, with a PCB, with uh, drawing lines, you know, old fashioned. Uh, there were no design software at, at that time, uh, uh, unless I, I guess. And putting the cards in an acid try with ferric chlorure and <laughs> then with a drill, with a drill yeah. making the holes for the chip. It was a latch to get the data from the bus of the Amstrad. <laughs> and then I used transistors and relays. Then I started also um, when, I was, uh, uh, when I was at the university studying telecommunications. Then it was the era of the 
compatible PC and computers. So then I move that interface to a, a PC in a slot and have programmed with C language and also mm -hmm. then making also my robots with uh, stepper motors. I also did my drivers to drive the motors. And, but there were no Arduino then. So mm -hmm. I had to write all the algorithm for the stepper motors. Nowadays, you would take a library. It's a pity that <laughs> yeah. there yeah. were no... What was your first microcontroller that you used? Yeah, well, in the practice, in the... Um, was it's it? not a microcontroller, it was a microprocessor, the 8086. Okay. okay. Let's say microcontroller, uh, Arduino was the first one. All right, okay. Okay. And then um, I remember um, installing a TCP IP stack on top of a computer running, not Windows, running DOS system, operating system, uh, PC. So it was amazing to run the TCP IP stack because normally the, the computer did not have this feature. And at the university, because in other place you have an internet connection, have access to all this surfing in the net, uh, all this uh, <laughs> quiz, uh, all this telnet, it was really amazing. Then yeah. one colleague there came from GNF where they were developing the World Wide Web. So we have seen the first web page and the first Mosaic Explorer running on Unix machines. Wow. Uh, so it's a long way since now. Yeah. And then I started, yeah. I, I was uh, amazed how you, uh, that to find a DLL to program inputs and outputs, my interface uh, on the Windows from a DLL input and output uh, download from internet. But you have to look, not in Google, you have to look in a, something called like... Alta Vista um, and stuff like Alta that. Alta Vista, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. you were, there were no, no browser. You, have to, you were was... in comment. Oh, yeah, time. yeah. You used links and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, RIC, Internet Relay Chats. RIC. Yeah. <laughs> then came, um, yeah, I, I joined uh, Rockwell Automation uh, with PLCs, and then I kept, kept with the same uh, philosophy, connecting. Uh, it was in year 92. Uh, no, sorry. This was in year 97. 97. I was 97. Connecting. I was just two years old. <laughs> <laughs> How old you? I was just two years old. <laughs> so yeah, I was connecting an industrial controller. You see that this is a passion for me. To a web page uh, with the help of a G GCI script written in C with the web page using the dashboards was called uh, intrinsic, intrinsic Controls from Web Internet Explorer. Okay. That's what you have now with the dashboard. And programming in Visual Basic. So yeah. it okay. was well, so you didn't, I mean, people usually use LabVIEW, right? For that kind of thing, you didn't yeah. use LabVIEW or? Yeah, LabVIEW was in the as well. university. Yes. You used as well, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it... I view now is similar to no red. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> an old version of no red, yes. Yeah. Very complicated then, version. Then in year 97, more or less, I stopped tinkering for 20 years. Until now, oh, well. uh, four years ago, I started again tinkering. <laughs> because it's I all the to... same thing now, right? Because... Uh... It's Laura. Laura is uh, very slow, so it's like back to the back to the past again. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. In, the, in that period of time, twenty years, I had to grow a family. I also yeah. painted, did painted. oil painting. Also oh, wow. my skills. If you Google my name in Google, you will find a lot of my words. <laughs> and <laughs> wow, I want to look at now. <laughs> and then uh, I also 
have been dedicated to windsurfing in those 20 years. And now, the last four years, it's just tinkering again. <laughs> First with Rosemary, then, <laughs> then Arduino, and then Laura Wine. And Amazing. trying to put into the, the work applications. Mm -hmm. That's so right. that's mean that you, you start thinking with IoT four years ago, or or when did you start like tinkering with IoT itself, like with Laura One technologies and and like Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Yeah, all, all, all at the same time. I, IoT with uh, Arduino and Laura One, because okay. before that was not IoT. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's different? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think it was not invented in, in year uh, 98. IoT was not invented, not yet. <laughs> well, um, now that, that you like start thinking again, I know that you work for a, a company that distributes uh, industrial components uh, that are like really well known in the industrial automation market. And can you share us a little bit more about the group Norcan, which is the company that you are currently working for right now? Like, what does the company do? What, what kind of industrial products they distribute? And what are the industry verticals that they usually work for? Yeah, the company, it's a group Noria, or Noria Logistics. It's operating only in Spain. We are a 1,000 employees company. On our revenues, it's 300 million euro. And we have five, um, 85 selling points. We sell, uh, well, we have uh, five, let's say, vertical markets. One is uh, industrial, the other one is um, uh, heating or HVAC, the other one is fluids, that water. Uh, supply. And the other one is lightning. And the other one is solar. And we have another uh, telecommunications VDI. Let's say short circuit television, uh, antennas, TV, all this stuff. And on the industrial area, we distribute Schneider Electric controls and Circutor. Circutor is a Spanish company working with uh, efficiency, uh, energy efficiency. That's right. So I think like now that, that you start like tinkering again and now that you have also like all these controls in next to you, you decide to start like putting in IoT technology to start mi mixing those like automation processes to, to the cloud. Like that is super, super interesting. Like how you can mix this with Laura One Technologies, that is something that you're going to be show showing us later. Because Xavier pres uh, prepared like a, a small presentation for all of us that is going to be pretty interested. I, I'm sure that you will enjoy it a lot. <laughs> and and also you mentioned that you start four years ago and you start like first with Arduino, then with the Raspberry Pi. But maybe when you start like thinking again, Laura was your first technology to start thinking with IoT, or did you start using like let's say Ethernet, Wi-Fi? No, yes, I started first, first with Arduino, and then the uh, ESP. Well, I to do uh, the this. Two six six. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, ESP three two. Three two. And I started not Laura. I started with um, RESTful APIs, HTTP, okay. and also MQTT. And then I started with Sigfox and then Laura. Okay, Sigfox. you migrated. So that's pretty nice. I didn't know about the, the that you also like uh, was working with Sigfox. Uh, then you can you can share like your thought about like Sigfox versus Laura. Now that you start working with Sigfox first. Well, because I um, I was uh, with Laura, you need a uh, gateway. Mm -hmm. So. I thought it was easiest to start with uh, with Sigfox because yeah. the, Ar the Arduino board, you get a free two years subscription mm -hmm. to yep. the mm -hmm. network. 
and there were a nice uh, tutorial in Spanish uh, webin uh, webcast called something about Arduino. I don't know, remember the name. I, I, that, that word, that the Arduino word was the, the Tintra what? the Tintra one, right? Like the one that with the shield. I yeah. think so. Yeah. It's the M M M MKR 1000 series. One of them okay, is yeah, uh, one of them. Okay, okay. And, uh, ah, yeah, the, the name of the webcast is Programar Facil. Okay. okay. <laughs> learning. Is the learning program. program. Is programar Facil. It's a nice webcast. So we have listened a lot of episodes there. <laughs> okay. So you, you started first uh, thinking with Wi-Fi technologies and then you jump to to like long-range communication technologies, such as Sigfox and LoRa. And what was that attract you at the beginning to this kind of technology? And also, how was your learning cure, uh, curve about these technologies? Yeah, with, uh, with LoRa, uh, I think the learning curve is um, so step. It's a difficult uh, and a slow way. Mm -hmm. if you want to learn LoRa, because there are no books dedicated to that, and the information is spread everywhere. And when yes. you start with um, your maker boards, and then you jump to a professional sensor, it's not the same. <laughs> First time you are a little puzzled, and you don't know how to do with the application session key or something like that, that normally on the sketch you write uh, the one you get from TTN, but when you have a professional uh, sensor, you get the application session key, not from TTN, but from the sticker in the box with mm -hmm. the sensor or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, uh, I started with some books. One is from um, Pradeca, uh, it's called Beginning uh, Lora Network with Arduino. I recommend this book because it's step by step. You get uh, big knowledge of this. And also another book from uh, Karl Kunnel, it's in, it's in German. Uh, it's called Easy Lora no Notes. Einfach Lora Knoten. I also recommend it. <laughs> well, this is my starting with this technology. And it's also following the, the trend. If you are paying attention to the Arduino trends, you end with Laura, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that, that is how it's worked. And do you have like any preferred Laura model at the moment? Yes, the Rack 2245. It's a funny, <laughs> fancy board okay. for, for a gateway. And in case of uh, a node, uh, I think WizBlock, it's a great board. I have a lot of projects in my mind <laughs> in the pipeline um, to do with uh, um, WizBlock. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, as I far as I far I kind of ties in your development because you are super active on LinkedIn, always sharing updates about the projects that you're working on. Uh, I found that Nogrid is an indispensable tool for, for all the integrations that you are um, doing right now. Can you share more about your experience using this tool and what are the features that you find most outstanding about it? Yeah, uh, Node Red. It's uh, ideal for non-programmers like me. Mm. But since I'm not a computer computer science man, uh, so all the programming knowledge we have is heritated from learning. <laughs> and uh, it's amazing how easy it's to send an email, send an MQTT message, send a Telegram with Node Red. But the most important is an uh, integration. How can you integrate different worlds, like the heating, AVAC, you can integrate with uh, water uh, supply, you can integrate with 
all the, those networks for BMS systems, building management systems or domotics, like for example, KNX or uh, or Loneworks, uh, anything. Uh, you can easily make an interface inside Node-RED mm. to different worlds that if you go to one manufacturer, they will not uh, give you a solution. You have to find the solution for your own. And with Node-RED, I think it's an easy way. And uh, every from time to time, each manufacturer develops its own brand Node-RED. Uh, yeah. Now you can use a solar panel with the inverter. You can read from one inverter. You can read from another uh, network energy meter from another brand. You can read from uh, uh, wind generation at home. Uh, different devices. This is, uh, yeah, have, have <laughs> the control like, of everything in, in just like one interface without having like the, the programming skills, which is pretty awesome. But like, the, did you find Nogret at the, like, at the beginning and you start like using it at the first moment? Or do you have, uh, or do you check other alternatives to Nogret uh, uh, to implement your projects? No, first I jumped from the Raspberry Pi from a little only little Python then I moved quickly in no red. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So okay. Do, you run the, do you run the node red on the gateway or on the cloud? Is it... I, I run preferably in the gateway, in the okay. rack 2245. Oh, mm -hmm. But uh, as I will tell you later, I also mm -hmm. have tested on the cloud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, both so you just need the device now. That's the next step, yeah. right? Because it was important for me, for that application that we'll explain today, to be okay. close to the controller, because the controller yes. has no um, VPN, no chance to go outside. It's only an Ethernet port yeah. inside your network. So you have to have no bread in your network. <laughs> you want uh, to make things easy. Because with Node-RED and Modbus, Modbus, Node, I read from the PLC, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So you, you mentioned that that your your preferred LoRa modes, uh, LoRa products, uh, were were are uh, the RAC 2245 and, and the Whistle, which are uh, RAC wireless products, both of them. Uh, so I would like to know your thought about about the rack, like a kind of company mm -hmm. and as a hardware mm -hmm. provider. <laughs> ah, another mm -hmm. one. Another one, yeah. The which um, one? Super. So <laughs> let's be, let's... 7441 Modbus <laughs> converter. Yeah. If you can show, if you can show it again, and now yeah. that you are in the screen, could be, could be nice so everyone can see how it's mm -hmm. Perfect. Amazing. And, and how do you hear from us as, as the first time? When did you start uh, using Rack Wireless products? Yeah, from Jose Perez. He's the initiator of the TTN community in Barcelona. Okay. And he's oh, the creator okay. of uh, Alternative to Tasmota. Oh, it's called, nice. Uh, it's yeah, called uh, it. Spurna. Spurna. Spurna, yeah. yeah. So he's the, uh, he he started talking about Prague 851 or something like that with a Raspberry Pi. Okay. And this was uh, the beginning. He was the beginning of your of your days with Rack. <laughs> was my, my teacher with Rack. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I have to contact him as well. Also, like the Tasmota. Um, like uh, integration, it's pretty interesting. I made, I use it um, like one and a half, two years ago to create my own um, home assistance and was pretty interested. Like, what's a pretty experience? Uh, but yeah, let's jump in again to, to our talk. There is like any other, uh, like, 
if you compare the WISP block uh, with other LoRa models, uh, like development uh, LoRa EndNote, uh, what, do, what do you think about the comparisons it have alongside the products that are available on the market? Well, it's interesting that it's uh, modular. You can make mm -hmm. like a puzzle and just take the part you need. Mm. Uh, and make a product custom made that suits the requirements. Mm. I have one idea for Wizblock, I will tell you later. Amazing. <laughs> if, if, you, if you want, we can jump to, to the presentation that we have so we, you can start sharing all the details uh, about the integration that you have been implementing as well uh, with the uh, RAC 2245 and as well the ideas that you have for, for the Wizblock. So I'm going to share your screen at this moment. Uh, right. Second. I start sharing. Here I have it. Cool. Yeah. Um, ah, now you have. Great. If I move, yes. <laughs> so this is what I wanted to explain uh, together with the demo. But uh, I want to introduce what I'm going to, to do. It's to transmit data from one controller to another controller separated three kilometers and the requirements were no internet no wi-fi no router no uh, network that can, can be accessed from mm -hmm. anyone with no authorization only the maintenance people has the right to access this network, okay? It's just a Ethernet cable. Well, as I will explain here. Uh, and concerning the, the agenda, I, I don't think I have time to talk about all of this, but I will dip right into the uh, application. And this is the layout, okay? As I have told you, there are two buildings separated. This is one building, this is another building separated three kilometers. And then you have PLCs on each floor of the building. PLCs for maintenance purposes, only for signaling, like uh, uh, air pressure, water, water pressure, uh, vacuum pressure and also fire, alarm, uh, heating, HVAC, signals, everything. And those alarms have to be sent so the people on the other building are aware of such alarms. What I did is to use um, a telegram of, well, not telegram, uh, um, let's say one byte after the other with all the bits. Each bit is an alarm, the status on and off. I have put all the, bit, all the bits in a stream. And like if you transmit hello world, you just transmit a string of bits. It's an ASCII characters at the end, okay? And there's one of these PLCs that codes this string from all the alarms and sends uh, first with Modbus TCP to the, this device made with Arduino. And then here they are running a Modbus TCP library and uh, LMIC, LM, LMIC, or a library to get this data and to send okay, to the gateway. The gateway gets this packet and then since we have a Raspberry Pi running with no red, we make a TTN uplink uh, decoding okay and then with a Modbus writing note we can write the data again in this master PLC and this master PLC then spreads the arms from the other building to an uh, HMI, okay? As you have seen here, there's only a cable 
uh, Ethernet cable. There's even no router here. Okay, each PLC has its own fixed IP address. The Raspberry Pi has its own IP address. Okay, that's what I do. But of course, here I use, excuse me, not TTN. I use Chip Stark. So uh, I subscribe with the broker. There's an, an MQTT broker running on this Raspberry Pi that comes when you install the SD OS from Rag Wireless web page. You get Raspbian with Mosquito Broker running. And so if you subscribe to Hash on that uh, IP, you get all the traffic from the gateway. So then you can decode. So this is not the right drawing. <laughs> you will see later. Okay. Mm. Uh, this is the scenario for the transmission. We have put the gateway inside of a box to have IP69, uh, um, well, 68, IP68 protection degree. And uh, the Ethernet cable goes down 16 floors until the basement where 16, 16 floors. It's okay. a very high building, so this is good for the LoRa transmission. And then on the bottom, on the basement, we have the PLC that this Raspberry is writing their Modbus TCP to the PLC and the HMI on the basement. And here, this antenna transmits omnidirectional and we are somewhere here, three kilometers on the other, on the roof, on the other corporate building. So we have moved walking to this destination. And of course, we needed a mobile equipment. <laughs> this is a, a little note. Everybody says, wait, LoRa is for small devices. <laughs> and this is not a small device, it's even heavy. <laughs> it's even a, a cabinet. Mm -hmm. But well, to do the test with the 24 volts battery and the Voltage regulator to have five volts for the Arduino. Then we switch the uh, inputs and we transmit three kilometers with no problem to the other building. Okay, this is the mode, the mode you can also call heavy one. This is uh, the PLC from Schneider Electric 251. That has Ethernet, two Ethernet ports, but you need the IoT functionality that we do with our IoT stuff. In this case, is an Arduino, but you could use here a whiz block. Would be better mm -hmm. because this is a sandwich, as you will see. <laughs> it's a <Yeah>. thick sandwich <laughs> with three flats, three floors. So you do the Modbus TCP on the Arduino? Yes. Right. Here yeah. you have the digital inputs cabled in parallel to the digital inputs card of the PLC and the program of the PLC written in ladder in this, this <laughs> under codices. Uh, gets all the digital inputs, packets in one byte or more, mm. and then sends per Modbus TCP with this patch cord to the Ethernet port and the, running, and the Arduino running Modbus library and Elmic. And then with Elmic, we send like, again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again with a sunny view of the device. <laughs> and down on the basement with these 16 floors, you have the HMI. Of course, okay. the, the maintenance people has a bigger HMI. There's only for test purposes. And you reach the digital inputs. You change here. You reach after, depending on the uh, data transmission ratio and the period, you get the data. This is the setup before 
taking a long distance, you have to test on the bench. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has worked as you will see in the video. Here you see clearly the rack wireless gateway with the PLC receiver PLC, and this is the emitter PLC. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see the video. Okay. Okay. First, in I, will, I will point to the video and then I will change my screen again. Excuse me. And I will go to this video here. Yeah, there's and a question. Uh, what is the yeah. uh, HMI? So yeah. what is that HMI? It's a human machine interface, right? It's just a screen with uh, yeah. some controls. Yeah. Nowadays, HMIs are HTML5, so like an Internet Explorer. Yes. But this HMI has its own hardware, firmware, software runtime. Mm -hmm. So you have to first, it's like a microcontroller, you have to install the software. Yeah. Then, but okay. but he, he means to the to the model yeah. of of the HMI that we're using. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's the HMI GTO two thousand three hundred or three hundred two thousand uh, three hundred three thousand two hundred. <laughs> okay. I will put in the in the chat. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, let's play the 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 video to to see it in action. Yeah, I will put. Uh, um, GTO. Here you have the model. I, I play the video. Do you see the video? Yeah, you can play the video. Oh, but now it stopped. Let's see. Uh, did you press the play button? Yeah. Play. Because I can see it. Like we can see, we can see your screen, but we can see the 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 video is it's it's reproducing. Mm -hmm. um, let me. Let me, uh, yes. let me start again. Uh, share the screen. I put play. Now it's playing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we have it. Okay. So now I will change the status of the digital input. This one is uh, the wave. And after some time, I have put, let's say, in 10 seconds, you will get the, here, you have the, did you see? And I, I turn it off again. And after some time, you have to wait for the, yeah, now it's off. So it, you're switching an input and then it's sending over LoRa, it's getting picked up and then showing on the HMI. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some viewers don't know what a PLC does. Can you say what, what up type of application you will use like this type of PLC? Yeah, it gets the status of the in digital inputs to know, for example, whether a pressure water pressure on a water supply pipe, it's okay or not. Maybe if you lose pressure, then you get an alarm. There's no pressure. Same for air. Imagine in a hospital, the yeah. air pressure to make the operations, surgery, also the vacuum, vacuum pressure. Mm -hmm. If you lose vacuum pressure, you cannot uh, make the surgery in the hospital. So then you get an alarm because it's a status on off digital input. Okay. And those but, controllers get the data. But an Arduino can also get digital inputs, right? Exactly. So why, exactly. Why do you use a PLC for Yeah, yeah. The difference is that the PLC it's uh, designed to run on the heavy duty conditions hmm. with even electrical uh, electromagnetic uh, noise the um, electric PCBs are mm -hmm. tropicalized, so mm -hmm. can afford long time without corrosion. 
and can afford uh, heavy loads in, in, in electrical. Yeah. If you have a trouble in the earth, of the installation, probably an Arduino will hang down. <laughs> fry. <and> a PLC, <laughs> yes. a fry in the uh, PLC. It's designed to work like a, a dinosaur, but forever. <laughs> and uh, I say dinosaur because the technology it's old and they are evolving a lot, but they are uh, unreliable. You mm -hmm. have factories with PLCs working for 20 years without yeah. problem. Yeah. The problem is when you have to make a, a spare, you have to find a spare, <laughs> there are no spare. Or if you lose the copy of the program. <laughs> yes. Okay, I will. Uh, stop sharing this screen. So there's another question. Do you know any software based emulator for the RS485 that you can use with Modbus? Oh, um, you mean with the Arduino or with Lora One? Uh, ah, you mean a, a, I guess like emulator. an emulator? Yeah, like an emulating uh, a Modbus device. Based yeah. Software. Yeah. Uh, for example, you can run Modbus in a ESP32, or even in a 8266. Okay. There's a Modbus library, and uh, so you can emulate even, the device uh, using it. Even you can use a Raspberry Pi with no red okay. to emulate. Even even the same no, uh, Modbus Node Red Notes has the normal notes to read real Modbus signals, but you can simulate uh, without having any hardware there, just with mm -hmm. the running Node Red. Okay. Okay. Well, I've never tried that. Interesting. And I also used uh, once uh, MKR one thousand ten. Arduino with a RS-485 shield to have a Modbus device also. Mm. Uh, I, I don't go to the second video because it's the same. Okay. So I will move to the other application. Is this one. Uh, this is a, another completely different um, customer requirement. This is for uh, air quality monitoring, CO2 monitoring. And we are using the RAC 2245 gateway here again. Mm. Here we use two, uh, two raspberries. This is a Raspberry Pi uh, HMI from Industrial Shields. So here we are redundant because at first step, I did not know how to run Node Red here. Mm -hmm. Later on, I have learned how to do it. So at the beginning, I needed two, uh, two Raspberry Pis. Okay, and this is a CO2 sensor from the, from this lab, a Lora One sensor. Mm -hmm. and let's see the the video. Uh, the video is here on the right. No, oh. in the uh, here is the video. Yeah, I will. Show the video and then share the screen. Let me share the screen again. Excuse me. Here's the... Yeah. And now the video is playing. Do you see the video? Yeah. So this is an explanation of the layout. Lora Gateway by Rack Wireless with Shipper Stark Lora server and a router. Right. The router is just for my demo to connect everything. And then, well, this is the parameters that you can measure with this uh, CO2 sensor. And we assigned every 10 minutes. This is the code available on the links, okay. 
Now here we see how the data packet arrives and we decode it. You see all the fields. Mm -hmm. It's and then you can scroll down oh, and nice. even check for the values. Single so you values. You don't send it to a dashboard or something like that. Uh, well, not yet. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, normally with Grafana, well, first to influence DB and Grafana, for example. Yeah. Yeah, it will be super simple, right? Super easy. Here you, you see the uplinks. And with the uplink, you see a JSON object. And this is the payload. Payload, difficult to read and because it's uh, 64 base coded. And then here I subscribed to the mosquito broker running on the Raspberry Pi on the, of the gateway. And I get all the traffic. Then I get just the payload. And then I do code from base 64. Then you get the numbers similar to those on the jumper from the manufacturer. Those numbers. And then you can start just pointing the matrix. This is a matrix of uh, integers. Now we go to the influx DB and we inject with this node, influx node, in a local influx DB database. And we can see, we can check our already created measurement table. Node-RED creates this ambient data table for you. You don't have to create a table and, or a record set. You don't have to create uh, fields or columns. You just inject a JSON string pairs and the fields are automatically created, like you will see here. Here you have the fields and the data type. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, InfluxDB will create for you. We make a query and we see here the data. And this is your question, Marcelino. Uh, let's inject the data from InfluxDB to a dashboard. In this mm -hmm. case, Grafana, but it's very useful. You can even send a telegram alarm to the Grafana. Mm -hmm. And well, this is, the, this is all oh, the concerning the video. Uh, I... That was a pretty big flow in, in Norway. <laughs> ah, now yeah. I go back to the. Um, Jose, I know that you have something right there yeah. in your corner. What is that? I think it's when painting from Javier. I just bought it. Yeah. <laughs> I put it in my home. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. The, the original is in, is in Germany. It's all in Germany. <laughs> oh, that is cool. I also saw one of your arts pretty awesome work as well. Yeah, I, I would like to show you uh, just uh, quickly another application with. Uh, do you see? Well, uh, excuse me, I go so fast, but I think I don't want to run out of time. And because uh, you, I will, or you will share the presentation, people will, will have access to all this. Uh, this is what I wanted to talk about. The the device I have shown before okay. is the RS four eight five to Lora one converter. That uh, it's a winner team. Uh, because you can uh, connect everything, uh, every device in the world since Modbus is a ubiquitous, mm -hmm. ubiquitous uh, network you have every, everywhere in motors, BFD, uh, sensors, all the energy metering, solar inverters, solar panels, uh, 
eolic personal generation, solar pumps. Uh, so you can do a lot with this. And this is what where we are having success in our company with this device. Okay. Also interesting to develop custom made sen sensors. Like we are uh, developing a vibration sensor, uh, laser distance sensor. Uh, I, I'm missing the module, the Ethernet. Are you planning to build an Ethernet cable uh, mm, port question. to this device? Because then I can use with this application the talked before. Right. And, uh, it's an uh, IO model. <laughs> okay. And uh, well, this is an example. If you want to use for any energy efficiency monitoring, a lot of cabinets separated uh, hundreds of meters, even kilometers of the same company. And you can get track of the energy. Okay, put in a database and so on with a RAG gateway and use uh, edge computing to make your application. Nice. Or integrate to the customer uh, IT system or infrastructure. Okay. Another application is for smart farming. Uh, you can count the, take the water meters count mm -hmm. to measure waste on, on water, uh, pressure transducer with a uh, whiz block. You can also have a solar pump. This is interesting because this is in the middle of the field where you have no internet connection, you have no main supply, no electricity. So then with the solar panels, this is what we make it in our company. You feed a VFD, to control uh, and drive to move a pump, an electrical pump, only with the sun energy. And the same energy uh, fits this converter, and then you can you can have access to the speed of the pump. You can know whether the pump is on or off. If there's a thermal protection, you can even start and stop the pump with no electricity at all and with no uh, telecommunications operator company for your communications uh, provided you have a gateway or a network mm. you can install your own gateway okay you have uh, a comment from, <laughs> from Travis that this is what Laura one was built for <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. <laughs> thank you yes a good but question, a question. Yeah, I, I want. I wanted to finish like the presentation to then jump to that question. This okay. is the last step. Yeah. Yeah, this is the light slide. It's just to comment that uh, with a colleague, uh, Ismael Batayer. Here you have the link. Um, we made uh, simulations of coverage, so you mm. don't have to move and make a walk test or a bike test or moving or the TTN to make a map. You can make a simulation to decide where to install the gateway and you will know the, the level of signal on your installation. And this is a software called uh, Sirenet from Aptica. And my colleague Ismael takes care of these simulations. And this is all, I think. Yes. Well, I all. just shared the, the link on the comments uh, about the small simulator so you can check it out and also we have a, a really interesting question from travis um which is uh, how have you found the industry to take the handling retrofits where companies retain their old plc SCADA, etc setups that go into and add a modern in modern interface yeah, normally the industry, it's a very conservative uh, technology and uh, behavior and mind mindset. It's difficult to change the mind <laughs> of those people. 
uh, and organizations. Normally, it's easier when you go to outside of the industry, for example, PLCs, industrial PLCs, but uh, at the hospital, where that's not an industry. And uh, if you're the maintenance um, responsible, is found fond of Arduino, then you win. <laughs> because you mix easily. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, he says, yes, I want an Arduino. So don't worry. I take the, your Arduino, I put the Lora transmission. Don't worry. <laughs> I see. Yeah. So if, if it's all about PLCs and old style, it's, it's maybe a no-go or difficult. It's difficult right? approach. So, but, but, we are, but uh, with, right, uh, right now there are some companies like developing like IoT PLCs. Like, what are your thoughts about like these new brand yeah. IoT PLC options? Yeah, there are the new brands. Uh, for example, Schneider Electric has the M262 PLC that has uh, MQTT capability uh, and all the. Uh, mm. Um, press full IP, uh, mm -hmm. all these wow. technologies, mm -hmm. and you can program uh, as the classical encodices um, standard that look, you can program uh, with some tasks made in ladder, some tasks mm -hmm. made in, in extraction blocks or in uh, graph set, and you can have one task written in JavaScript. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, <laughs> on a PLC <laughs> from Siemens. <laughs> That's incredible. But you have it. <laughs> okay. you, have, nice. you can do interesting things with this. Mm -hmm. And uh, nowadays, uh, PLC companies develop the uh, IoT box. It's like a Raspberry, but rugged dice and prof professional Raspberry. Mm -hmm. Then you have the edge computing also, together, together with the PLC. And you have also, have also the IoT platform in the cloud based on uh, Azure mm -hmm. or uh, AWS, all those. And also the augmented reality. They use, oh. they mix Node-RED with an edge box. Edge box is uh, edge computing and augmented reality. So you point I with your mobile or with yeah. your camera or the tablet to the cabinet or to the machine, mm. and the maintenance people get a message, now point this, check this circuit breaker, now do this operation, you get a manual. So PLC companies are moving fast on these technologies, yes. Actually, I saw the, the demo, that, yeah, that um, virtual reality uh, feature that they provide in your, in your LinkedIn and what's amazing. Like just put the camera in front of your your cabinet and you have like all the maintenance that you need. Like was was impressive. Really good stuff. And, and then, yeah. Yeah then I, I come to the maintenance company and then they have ideas. And they say, yeah. okay, I could check all the air conditioning filters with a QR code with mobile phone. I point the QR code. And the system, the augmented reality, will tell me if the, that, that filter has been, been changed or not. And then will record the time and, and date when the filter was recorded. And at the end of the month, just pressing a button, the maintenance company has uh, the bill to send mm -hmm. to the factory. Yes. That's an idea with augmented reality. That's a good and idea. Whatever <laughs> yeah. you can imagine. <laughs> There are many no things that doing you can paperwork. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so, uh, people, all of those who are connected, if you have any questions to Xavier, feel free to leave it in the comment section, and he will be happy to to answer them. Uh, just like to to add in like a, an an extra question here on myself. Uh, do you mentioned that you reach uh, three kilometers on on the first project that you share, like for the Laura coverage uh, with the RAD 2245. Uh, but this is like the longest coverage that you have ever reached, or no. did you reach, have ever reach more coverage? No, no. In, in Barcelona, first tests with the RAC 2245 
were seven kilometers. But then moving to the seaside on the shore, mm -hmm. I, I have transmitted 15 kilometers to the rack to 245. But the, the antenna was a, a little antenna with little gain, little quality. Mm -hmm. So if you use okay. a nice antenna, mm -hmm. or even if you use a sector, you could use a sector antenna, not omnidirectional, mm -hmm. then you, you would reach. Because I, I'm doing uh, experiments with our customers, and we have reached 62 kilometers in a flat mm -hmm. area with sector antennas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very nice. Good coverage. Well, we, we, we haven't received any question in our comment section so far. Uh, so we can jump to, to that uh, rag mask giveaway. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to share the questions that Xavier are very prepared for all of those who are connected. So the, the giveaway logic is pretty simple. You just have to answer the question that I'm going to be placing on the screen in a few seconds. And the first one who is responding the, um, the proper answer to the question will be receiving a rag mask for their workbench, okay? So the first one that we have here is, it is possible to have no rent running on the same machine as the RAC 2245 gateway? It was a pretty simple one. Let's see. <laughs> and, and also, so there is like any, any message that, that you, that you want to share to our community of entrepreneurs, makers, and engineers as yourself? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, just try to um, <laughs> make your project having fun. <laughs> when, whenever you, your job makes you makes fun, you will make great things. And that's the aim. <laughs> That's the main, the main message. That, thanks for sharing that. We we have received like two question, which is yes, thanks Vladislav, and also uh, David Malas, welcome again. Um, yes, you can use Docker to keep it clean as well. So that is a, a good point to to highlight over here. So yeah, we have two two, um, two persons who participate for this question, and then the second question is. Which operating systems remain after installing the gateway software with the RAT22 SD image? Mm. Very easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's see. Yay, I have, you have new people coming, coming to the sessions. So this is your your opportunity to get a roadmap for, for your workbench. So feel free to participate. Maria, Maria, I, I have a question for you and Marcelino. Of course. When you... Yeah, yeah, let us know. Yeah, are you planning to prepare um, OS SD image with the things stuck for the rack 2245? Oh. Um, hmm. I don't think there is a project for that, but could be done. Could be done. Or is maybe it, uh, someone can do for us. <laughs> have you have you used the thing stack? The Not new yet. One, I right? would like to, but okay. I have seen in the Spanish community that many people are trying to install the things stack, and it seems that it takes a little work. Yes, as usual. <laughs> yes. And if you just burn, if you just burn an SD card, it is yeah. I think with Docker, it's like ten minutes, right? I've, that's what they say, but maybe not. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to see about that. Uh, <laughs> It could be an idea. We we love chirp stack, so we've been working with uh, Ordner for a long time now. It's working very well. Um, but the thing stack is new, so we can 
we love to try that. Yeah, actually, like I just, I just did a try uh, this month, <laughs> and yeah, the thing, like it's, it's pretty interesting. But um, like at the beginning, like as is something new, like getting a startup can be something like difficult as it were getting a started with Laura like two, two years ago. But uh, the interface is is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we got the answer from Vladislav as well, <laughs> which is Rad OS. Uh, so thanks Vladislav for for participate in in this giveaway. Uh, so this is this is all for for the uh, story. I'm missing the banner that is the proper one. So here we are. Uh, I think that that was all for for the session for for today. Uh, this was like a pretty interesting session with you. Like we we run over different type of application that we have ever never seen in in this session, which is pretty awesome. Thank you for Xavier for sharing your experience with us and also for taking the time to to prepare that presentation and also to take the time to be with us today sharing all the things that you have been doing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that this will be a great help for for all of those who are right there connected or anyone who is going to watch this session later and, and are looking to to make a mix between automation systems with IoT, that that is, that is something that you have been doing during the past year. So um, if anyone have questions about it, feel free to jump to Sabir. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he will be happy to, to, to help them. Um, I really look forward to, to see the projects that you, that, to see the progress in the, in the projects that you're currently working on, and also to see those projects that you are planning to do uh, with the wisdom because see see them on action will be really really awesome and I hope you can also record a video the same one as you did with the um, with the PLC to PLC Laura communication with Ria which was a pretty exciting video and I'm sure that the committee will love to 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 take a look of it and also learn um, from it. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. I don't know if if Jose, there's something that you want to add to to conclude with the session. Yeah. No. no uh, sorry. Marcelino. Sorry, the sound was breaking up a little bit. Yeah. Um, ah, no, no. I, I think the session was great. Amazing to have you here, Javier. I look forward to more projects in the future with with uh, on Mudbus industrial stuff, um, yeah. Ethernet, all of that. <laughs> no, I think that's that's all. And a very once again, thanks. Uh, and I don't know if you want to add something else, like any other additional message that you that you want to share with us or with the people that is connected. This is the perfect time to do it. Yes, uh, thank you very much for all your interest. And uh, just to remind that, please share your designs, share your uh, ideas with the community because this is the way to be uh, to grow the technology, our knowledge, and our de developments. <laughs> That's right. By the way, I really look forward to that um, Ethernet model that you have in mind to, to work on. <laughs> uh, like, we, some people get excited in the comment section. So, yeah, it can be something interesting to, to, to change that big sandwich that you have in the system and replace it with something super tiny, like, yeah. just like this one. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, awesome. Uh, well, uh, thanks to uh, to all of those who who connect the session, all of those who uh, stay within the entire session. Uh, if you are watching this session later, leave your question or any comments in the comment section. And Xavier, Jose, and or and I uh, will be happy to answer any question you may have in the future. Uh, before I leave. Uh, please make sure to subscribe to our channel to to get up, to get updates in the upcoming sessions. And we hope to see you next time to all of you once again. Enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, or night. 
Um, my best wishes to all of you and happy hacking, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs> See you.